Right, man. <laughs> so, we we're going to talk about Matt Dennison, yeah? In, in, we talked about it in the break. Were we? Yeah, but, uh, about... Um, I was going to talk, talk about your gigs. Oh, no, man, not my gigs. Jesus, they haven't happened yet. I'm, I'm actually... What, now, at the moment now, I'm on my winter break. Uh, I'm actually... Because I, did, I, I had a problem with my shoulder, I did a rehearsal in a rock band and... I'm an old man now. I tried to put my kit bag, you know, in in the in the storage in my in my house, uh, and for a month I've, I've not been able to move my shoulder. So I just called it all off. And to be honest with you, man, um, my days of playing in the winter here, uh, I just give up. You know, I, I'd rather be with my family, man. My daughter's growing up real quick, you know, and and, and the late nights, Kenya, they they come in at three in the morning. You know, you're missing your family, man. You're missing the, the best part of the day with your family. To be honest with you, at dinner time and school and all that so I, I kind of sack it for about five months a year so in effect i get a five month holiday which is fantastic man <laughs> it's really cool and so are there, sort of are there many places to play where you're in portugal is there oh, not some place for kids? Yeah, oh really? god yeah I and mean, this is like a this is like tourist zone capital man i mean from april right through to october late october this is take your pick of where to play really uh there's oh. lots of um ah, Regulations and stuff with sound limits coming in now, and uh, and licensing uh, quite rightly for pitches on the street. Uh, and how it turns out here, quite perversely, strangely, actually, if you've got the right kind of act, you can make three times the amount of money in a third of the time playing in the main street at the right restaurant with permission, with the right license, than you could in any bar or any club or any hotel. That's the strange thing about the Algarve. And what I've done is I've tapped into that because I come here busking and uh, I'll do two or three nights, maybe uh, from eight o'clock to nine. And that gives me the money of four gigs, man, four gigs. So it gives me another night off with my family in the summer. And then I'll take a few gigs on. For, uh, it's so sad to say this, but it really is. Prestige gigs. So people see you on stage with a full band, you know, uh, and, and unfortunately, <clears throat> here the economy in the music in music scene here is keyed towards um, anywhere like anywhere else. The bars want to make as much money as possible, and they want to pay as less as possible for the band, and that's all very well. But if you've got a five-piece band, they're going to give you the same money as give a duo, right? So, or you might as well go as a duo. It's and what who suffers at the end is the punter, is the client. Really, that's the, that's the sad thing about the Algarve, I have to say. We were talking, uh, we were talking this afternoon about um, of getting um, you know, um, independent radio stations getting played in in the bars and clubs and stuff in the Algarve. Do you think that's uh, that's a possibility? Well, you Are know, I don't, I'll tell you what, we'll definitely start investigating that because there's been um, a new levy for uh, ambient music to be played in um, in well, at least in this town, at least in this bar where they're charging the restaurants an inordinable amount of money just to play ambient music. So w w that's fed into me, personally, when I'm there with... Uh, set, I've set up a very small stage, and I'm outside these establishments playing half an hour of uh, quality music for people to dine to. Is that your I little rubber duck that fell out of the bar? Uh, yeah, that, that was my... That was my yeah. <laughs> That was, uh, that, sorry, that, that was um, one of my sex toys fell to the floor there. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that was the headphones just fell off there. Right? The handcuffs and me, me rubber things. But no, but the, the, so what's actually the upshot of the regulations is, is people want more music in the street, man. So it's more lucrative mm. to play this. So now I'm being employed by a large, um, they call them esplanadas here, which is terraces, which hold like 100 people, you know. So now yeah. I'm being, uh, for the last five years, I've been getting employed. And also, you know, people are donating and buying CDs. And this is where the money is really at in the Lagos music scene, to be quite honest with you. The bar scene and the bar and the, and the, and the bands. Well, let's just let's, let's, let's break it down. You turn up with all your kit at seven, right? You eat, you, you put the kit, you start uh, maybe a gig at 10, 11 o'clock at night. You finish at two, you break down, you're home by five in the morning for 50 euros. Well, so what's this, you know? That's slavery, man. Mm. Oh, you can go to the street and you can make 120 euros and you're home to watch uh, Breaking Bad, you know, by 20 past nine. What's that? Mm. Big difference, huh? 
Absolutely. So and, and obviously the, the, best, the good thing about this for restaurants and bars is that they've got no, with independent music, they've got no uh, co- uh, royalties to pay, no PRS uh, exactly. uh, fees to pay. Exactly. And, it's all, exactly. it's, and it's good for the artists too. It's exactly. So like for, I mean, one thing that I'm probably well situated to actually, because this idea is a very good idea, Kenny. So on my travels this year, I'll be putting forward Loop Radio because it's all independent. For this as well, for certain bars and certain places, especially in the daytime, where they have like um, they haven't got a DJ or they haven't got yeah, like, yeah, you know, that. Yeah, 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 for absolutely. sure, man. Yeah, yeah, I'll be definitely, I'll, I'll be a champion in that for, for sure. Yeah. So before you interrupted me uh, to talk about um, gigging, now I wanted to talk about Matt Dennison. So uh, can you tell me a little bit about, about Matt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, back to Matt. <laughs> Before I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey, Matt. Matt is a, a fantastic guy, man. I mean, he must be like twenty, mid twenties. Um, I, I actually bumped into him. I was walking past a bar again, just walking past on my on my way through town, and I heard this amazing music. And I stuck my head in. And I see this guy, long black hair, you know, doing his thing. And, and I stood there for a while, and the way he interacted with the audience was fantastic, you know. So I took, a, took time to get to know him a little bit, and then invited him up to uh, to do like a live spot in, in, on the show. And then he starts hitting me with all these uh, MP3s, now. And he's gone off now. He's doing a, the winter tour in the Alps and the ski resorts now. Still sends me the odd tune. Actually, one of the tunes I've, I've submitted to you, Four Day Four, is he's just sent me that recently. Now, if I tell you this guy makes all this music in the hotel room on his laptop, man. Drums the lot, man, everything. He mixes it all, he does the, the vocals, the, the side panning, the, the everything, man. The production, everything is, 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 is of his own making, man, which is incredible. Let's have a listen. This is uh, Matt Dennison and uh, For They Whore. Oh, dear, I couldn't ask that long. High quality music on the web, every day. Loop Radio. Supposed to be no supposed to be no
That's Max Dennison there and a four day whore. God, I wish it would afford a half an hour whore, but there you go. Well, I that's have one a... of those in Amsterdam once, almost bloody killed me. That's a lovely, that's a good track, mate. Yeah, great stuff. Um, so we were talking about, um, just talking, what, what were we talking about? I don't know, I can't remember now. Brain's gone. <laughs> We're chatting about uh, Matt and his and the way he Matt. makes music in That's hotel right. rooms uh, when he's when he's touring around doing his gigs. Excuse me, uh, and he does it s- somehow now on a laptop. Uh, really, uh, I'm bemused with that. It amazes me. Amazes me. You know, obviously, he's got the right programs, but yeah. um, to get a sound like that, um, actually, there's another artist as well called Dale Collins, who who uh, has got a project. What a well-known project, and one of the songs he did as well. He did the same thing. He did it on such a, a small amount of equipment, but it sounds like a huge studio, you know, job, man. And it's really cool. It made that mm. it's, it's amazing what so, you can do, man. So, but if you've got the right, well, you don't even have to have the right gear now. I mean, you know, you can do so many things with, um, um, with your, you know, with your vocals, with your, with, with all sorts of instruments, and um, as you said before, panning and phasing, and all sorts of tricks you can do now on uh, with software on the, on a computer, which is. Yeah, which for me is great because, you know, I'm never going to go gigging again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'd love just to send out like a, 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 a sort of like a robot of me so I can stay at home watching TV, man. Just send the robot out to do the gigs yeah. in the summer. That would be wicked cool. <laughs> Hologram would do, wouldn't it? Oh, man, we haven't, we haven't actually hit that technology, but as soon as they are, I'm on that button, man. I'm telling you now, honestly, just sitting at home, there's me with a glass of wine. And there's the other guy getting sort of like some drunk guy in his face going, yeah, mate, you know that one, yeah, mate, like this. And I'll be at home all chilled out, you know, so like <laughs> So you think you've done some, you know, some cover, Did, were, you, were you in cover bands or was it Yeah, just, loads, um... man. Loads, uncountable, uh, un- uh, numerous. It's um, really, because it's really the way, because look, here, in this, what we're doing here, holiday makers come here. And the psychology behind it is they want to be reminded of a good time, don't they? And what you have to do is you have to reach into your pocket, bring out a cover to remind them of like 20 years ago when they were young and pretty and they're on holiday. And I remember that song, Then They Want to Dance. So you sort of like play into nostalgia all the time uh, uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, in, a, in a tourist zone like this. To, to be brave enough to bring out your own work in such an environment, it's suicide. It's suicide, a musical suicide in a um, touristic zone. To make good money, you've got to be like, uh, as we say in Portugal, a puta. You have to be like, you know, you have to take it in certain areas. <laughs> Just bend over a little bit. You have to, because there's no way and there's no there's no room for your ego. There's no room because you have to make that money. You, you've got six months, actually, really, high season, three months. And you've got to make the money for the, the whole year. So you can't afford to say, hey, I want to play this, I want to play that. You've got to play what you know works with that audience. And that, that's that simple. All right, we've got another track coming up, um, another one of your tracks coming up. And after that, we're going to do, uh, I think we're going to play one of your um, one of your uh, commercials that you were talking about earlier on. So <laughs> this first track is, um, well, this next track is uh, a track you did with Ian K and uh, called Shiny Brook. What's this one about? Can I make, can I make uh, like, Ian K wrote this song back in the, uh, it, about 86, 87. Now, this was combined with the whole thing about Saddleworth Moore and Myra Hindley. Yeah. And she was there, I might make exactly. Now, the whole song is about her going back to Saddleworth Moor uh, to look for the bodies of the children. And I know it's a very depressing subject matter. However... Sake. Keep away from sharp objects, people. <laughs> <laughs> Keep away from the sharp it. objects. Put the knives <laughs> away, people. Get away from any sharp objects. Exactly. <laughs> Off Stand back end. from the kitchen, lads. Get away from ledges <laughs> or anything that might be tempting to you end it all. But that's the truth of it. That's that, that's the nuts and bolts of that tune. Uh, however, I've revamped it, and I had the, one of the best violinists that I know. Actually, <laughs> the violinist in this is why we got the name for Blue Nose Baboon, because it's the, the, the artist that, when he gets drunk... He's a little tiny violinist guy. He gets angry and his nose turns blue. And it's actually this guy. I've got to say his name now, haven't I? It's Joao Cadeva. And he, he, we love him. And he, he knows he knows that we got the name from him. And he's quite cool with us calling him Blue Nose Baboon. Uh, but Joao Cadeva was on the violin on this, uh, on this, on this version of Shiny Book. And as, as upsetting as the subject material might be, it's still a really cool tune. Oh, 
On your radio again comes the strains of Cuddly Ken. That's the sound of uh, Kai O'Callaghan there and uh, Ian Kay. A track called Shiny Brook. Oh, yeah, that was um, pretty bloody depressing, really, when you think about it, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was well, you know, fun. I like to send people off into the night with a, with a, with a, a, a you know, a suicidal thought of two, actually. It's quite nice. <laughs> so in your, uh, in your shows, you, uh, you make up some, um, some uh, faux... Um, commercials and stuff so uh, can you tell us a little bit about, about these ones well, we do man it's like this because you know we're the balloon house balloon is non-profit as i mean as well, i hope i've said before and um the idea was basically to, uh, 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 just to make up something that breaks up the show a little bit because the music the musicians are 100 percent real 100 percent real but, uh, you know, and I kind of like, I don't want to sort of like come off like uh, I take myself too seriously, which I don't. None of us do in, in this, as far as I'm concerned. So we sort of come up with this idea while I was walking the dogs one day, just to, just, can I say, piss about? I've just done it, haven't I? Just mess about. And just, uh, uh, no, you can't. No, fun. sorry, you can't do that. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, well, I'll take that back then. <laughs> <laughs> we just want that back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Off we go. Right, start again. So we're just, just having a laugh with it, you know, about things that could never exist, that, that would never, ever exist. But the upshot was, we let that go for a while, and only after a few times people were listening regularly, they started realising, hey, what's this stuff? So I get my brother, who's just got into the show, he's got himself all, uh, you know, he's, he's on the internet now, he's got it plugged into his taxi in London, he's driving around, making his customers listen to my show, you know, like this. And, he's all, and he, he contacts me. He says, hey, I love the show, man. And this is my brother, you know. I love the show, man. Hey, 
who's that crazy guy that makes your adverts? And I'm like, uh, Tony, that's me, man. <laughs> so that was like, that was, I was made up from that moment on for sure, you know. So I hope you can, I don't know which one you've chosen, but whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be a laugh. I've chosen the one you told me to choose. Which, which one was, was that? <laughs> Endings Spa. Oh, God, this one has some well, connotations. Happy endings, um, happy endings, you know, uh, massage parlours and the rest. I'll let you make the rest up yourself. <laughs> Modern life stressing you out. Do you feel as though your life's never-ending treadmill? Well, come to Happy Ending Spa Resort and let us get you off. Experience true serenity and relaxation deep in the forests of Monchik Mountain. Spend a day with one of our massage therapists and unload all that backed-up anxiety and stress. You're in safe hands here at Happy Ending Spa Resort. You'll like it so much, you want to come again and again. As we see here at Happy Endless Bar Resort, stress is just a mess that hasn't been wiped up yet. With well-trained staff and full facilities, we offer you a once-in-a-lifetime experience, so don't delay. Come today. Our resort is well signposted and easy to find with ample parking in the rear. So come one, come all to Happy Ending Spa Resort today and let the stress of this modern world be drained out of you. For reservation stone, one, two, one, two, one, two, four, three, six. Oh. 
Just tuned in, you're listening to The Dark Side with me, Kelly Dark Rain, here on loopradio.net, the very best independent radio station on the planet. And also on uh, 440 South uh, in Staten Island, New Jersey. That was a song by uh, Helen Colligan, a thing called Drifting. That's a lovely that's a lovely track, that, mate. What's that one about? That's beautiful, isn't it? Um, uh, Helen uh, was um, instru- well, instrumental, but she was there on the on the first ever Blue Nose Baboon Jam back in 2012. We did it in a bar in Bois de Luge, in, in, on, here in the Algarve. <laughs> And she turned up, and I actually never met her before. She came with um, another uh, member called Shane Selick, uh, who I'll, I'll have to send another, more of his uh, music another time. But she's really great, man. She's got this great EP called um, Elements. Uh, if you go to the Monsoon Season page on Facebook, she's got the whole thing there uh, ready to go. Go and buy it, man. Go, she's got it on iTunes. She's got it on CD Baby, CD Baby, I'm sure. And all the usual outlets, basically. She's got it there. But what really attracted me about this this um, this girl, not girl, I can't say that because I sound like I'm a police stalker, you know, this artist. <laughs> this young lady with the lovely <laughs> red hair and the lovely baboonies. Yes, I like her. Yes. She's lovely, yes. lovely, yes. lovely. Yes. Comfortable <laughs> shoes. <laughs> she was very sensibly dressed. <laughs> well, no, but she's such a great person as well, but her voice. Some of the phrasings that she comes out with reminds me of like um, Edie Brickell from, from back in like 25 years ago. Edie Brickell, mm. and anyone remembers yeah. her out there in Radio Land. Yeah, and yeah. she's got this great sort of gentle, <coughs> light voice, which is which has got a nice blues lilt to it. And, and this is really, uh, that's about how I'm going to sum that up. But, and she's, plays, she plays her own guitar, she writes her own material. Uh, and she's been, in my eyes, she's a great success. She was here gigging as well in 2012, I think. Making it the hard way through the, through the through the bar gigs, and keeping the prices up as well. Intelligent young lady. She was insisting on getting paid top dollar, and she got it. Fair play to her. So if you've uh, if you've got a question for um, for Kai, you'd like to ask Kai a question, uh, come into our chat room at www.loopradio.net and uh, click on the uh, chat room link. And uh, come and ask a question because oh, he's dying to he's dying to he's dying to answer your questions, aren't you, Kai, mate? Yeah, well, I'm here. I just put on home. I'm here on the chat on the chat box. There, there you go. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> so, what what made you get into radio? How did you get into radio? You know, doing the DJ oh, and all sort of stuff. Kind of fell into it in a way, but it's uh, look, it's it was like this. I used to be a DJ. Uh, tr- we spoke about trance DJ and uh, whatever on the, uh, with the sound system and, and these things. And I used to play rock guitar over trance music. We used to create in the studio in England and here in Portugal. And, you know, these things, and that died down for one reason or another. And then uh, the Blue Nose Baboon project started, and I thought, well, I'm only involved with a few musician, musicians I know, and a few producers, and I was really like this, you know, thinking, well, just keep it small, and we'll just have a few videos, and it just sort of, it just literally just, just exploded, man. And then, then I started getting people I didn't know, and then I had to verify their music, and I started making videos, and it just went on, went on, went on. Then I got contacted by a guy called um, George Hegelman, from Fame Music Radio in yeah, South we, Africa. We know George. He's a lovely guy, George. George. Yeah, yeah. Lovely He's guy, George. He's a fantastic guy. You know George, man. And he sort of like, uh, kind of took me under his wing in a way, you know? Uh, in fact, tomorrow I'm doing an interview with him uh, that pre-recorded goes out on Sunday, I think, uh, about the project and about probably you're going to come up in conversation for sure. And uh, so he sort of like, and at that time it's weird because it was like, um, when was that? It was December, oh God, geez, 2013. And the project has stalled a little bit, you know, not much, but just stalled enough for me to ask the questions, you know, when you're alone at night thinking, oh, is this worth carrying on? And, it, and he's sort of like, uh, he's just, hey, I found your YouTube site, we love your videos, we love your music, and this infused me with this enthusiasm, which I normally have naturally, but at that time I'd actually lost a little bit, you know, and he sort of lit a candle under my ass. To, That's all you need honest. sometimes, isn't it? Just all you need is yeah. some, someone to say they like it, you know, and um, make yeah, sure yeah, man. This, someone's actually been listening. Someone's actually watched the work and actually watched the video. And so then I, went, I did a few interviews with him, and then I did with this uh, other guy, the Wolfman in LA, uh, and uh, it just went from there. And and from then on, um, I, I got other offers from other stations because of the website and because of the um, exposure. And Mark Langford. I have to say, this guy from Epix Radio, uh, I was sending him music on his um, Unsigned Artist uh, spot 
every three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays on his show, on his morning show. And uh, he basically just came out with his, hey, man, why don't you do a show, you know? And, and, uh, and I immediately pulled away. It's, oh, no, about that. And my missus, the glorious web designer for Blue Nose Baboon, uh, Katia Guerrero, Amanda Guerrero, she insisted, man. She really pushed me. She says, hey, you can do this. You can talk for England. What's up with you? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. So I just took the ball by the horns and I made the first pilot for, for Epics Radio. And then, as I said, I landed P.O.T. for president, which is Pietro uh, Di Matteo, as my first guest. And it infused such a lot in, in me, man. It just got me, got me into it, does it? Brilliant. That's fantastic. Well, we, we, we actually met through um, uh, Dave and Lynn Hines from the, the Bounty Hunters, didn't oh, we? Yeah, these guys, man. You know, and we met, me and Dave and Lynn met through guests. George Hagen. Really? From Come George? And I was listening to Fame Music Rendezvous Hour. Which I do. I try, I had a band rehearsal on Sunday. So lucky that's finished now. I can get back to my Sunday routine, chilling on this couch with George, you know, playing in in the, in the background. And um, I was there like uh, I came out. I came out you know, my toilet or whatever. And I heard this amazing solo, ripping solo. And it was um, God, what was it? Doing time. It was the track. Oh doing yeah, time. yeah. And the riff. Ding, 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 ding. And I thought, wow, that's a great so That's a great hook. And then when he, when Dave went into the Wawa solo, and that was it, man. You know, I was obsessed with getting that band on my show. You, you yeah. understand what I mean? And yeah, I, I spoke to George immediately, because we're always on Facebook when George is on, on the show live. I said, Joe, jo, George, give me that. Link them up. And, and, he, and he, of course, immediately he sent me the link, and that was it. And, uh, and, and that's, how me, that's how me and you met, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of people. I mean, Dave Lynn are just... Uh... Just nice people, you know. Just, got, just can I tell you a, 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 small, a little bit of a funny story there? Yeah, go on. Right, we had an interview me and Dave and Lee. You know, it's eleven, eight, 11 hours in front of us, isn't it? Yeah. Right? So, like yeah. nine, nine in the morning is their eight or whatever. So, I arranged to, to do an interview at my nine o'clock and their eight o'clock, right? And they were like, "Okay, but we might have had a few glasses of wine because we've got a friend <laughs> coming. We haven't yeah. seen for fifteen years, and we might have a few glasses of wine." So. I went the night before and I fucking did the biggest bender I've done this year, you know what I mean? I'm talking a bender, mate. I mean, I was, I was distorted drunk, you know? So I got back in and, and you know, obviously woke up on the couch like a, a crash bleed victim, you know, being run over by a bus. And I really, oh God, I've got to do the, do the Skype, you know? So I get on and I'm all, I'm, I'm all over the place, mate, I really. But luckily, I'd stalled the interview long enough for them two to get a bit pissed, so I sounded <laughs> normal, mate. I did. So, and I was really, I was hanging, mate. I was hanging from a thread, and they nursed, they nursed me through that interview that I was supposed to be interviewing them with, mate. Fair play to them. Yeah. yeah. They're lovely, lovely people. I've got lots of time for them. And, you know, I mean, Dave, as you know, is, uh, he's had a big career with a lot of big bands, and um, just a nice, you know, just a nice down-to-earth guy. And, and Lynn's lovely, you know. No ears yeah. and graces there, is there? Honestly, when you talk to them, and the, th the funny thing is, was I managed to keep it together for the, the it was like a half an hour interview with them. And uh, they were a little tipsy. They weren't drunk, mm. mate. Totally professional. But I was hanging totally unprofessionally hungover, mate. I've got to tell you, and, and I'll never do that again the rest of my life. I'll tell you, because I was painfully hungover. And mm. uh, it became a joke, actually, with, with, with them. But uh, the, the, the interview went fine, perfect. But I spent the rest of the day on the couch recovering, man. And, and these guys were so, so great. They actually apologized. Actually, the, um, Dave dropped the F word. Lucky, because it's, it's pre-recorded, you know. So I thought I'd follow him and drop one as well. <laughs> you know, I did, you know. So we're going to bleep you out. I'm going to bleep me out as well, baby. It's just like this, you know. Yeah, great guys, man. Really cool people. So the next track we got is from uh, Dale Collins. This one's called Slipping Away. What's this uh, track about? Well, this guy here is uh, actually, if you remember um, uh, Uriah Heep, the, yeah, yeah. the, 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 the big band, you know, Dale Collins is actually working, it's actually called the Collins Shaw Project, right? Uh, he's actually working with Bernie Shaw, the last lead singer for... Yeah, uh, of course, yeah, Uriah of course. Heap. Yeah, it was ninety five. So like, there's a tenuous link to to to. to well, there's a link to uh, to Bernie Shaw. So uh, Dale Collins has sent me two parts of his uh, of, only two parts that he sent me. He sent me two songs from the Collins Shaw project, but this is actually from his Sleeping Dogs Lie, which was from the early nineties, which I don't think includes Bernie Shaw. 
I'm not sure, actually. But uh, it definitely has Dale Collins on guitar and vocals. Uh, and what I will do, though, Kenny, I'll, I'll, I'll furnish you with uh, the Bernie Shaw tracks as soon <coughs> as it's finished. I'll send them really? to your Facebook, and you feel free to play them, man, because uh, they are uh, having it. But this particular song caught me because of the hook, the guitar, the guitar hook at the beginning. It's a beautiful tune. Hi all, this is Syl Kay, singer-songwriter from Brisbane, Australia. And you're on Loop Radio with Kenny. And hi to all my friends on Loop Radio. Lots of love, lots of hugs. See you soon. Happy vibes. That's Dale Collins there, and a track called Slipping Away, and uh, we are slipping away into the Twilight Zone, because we've just been, we've just been joined by the awesome Miss Robin M. Graves. Hello, madam, how are you? I'm doing well, Tony, how are you? Thank you, so just give a little bit of applause there. Yeah. I'm doing really well, yeah, thanks. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming and joining us on the, uh, on the show. What have you been up to? Uh, not much, trying to keep warm, we've got another snowstorm coming in, and yeah, I, I heard Kai drop the handcuffs, so you know I wanted it on this conversation. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> you were the very first person I thought of, I thought, yeah, Robin, handcuffs, 
she's in for this one. Right. <laughs> it's always those friction burns that piss me off, man. You know, it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Uh, I'm in France. Uh, we've got Mr. Kai O'Callaghan in Portugal. And we've got the lovely Miss Robin M. Graves in, uh, in New York. So well, how much more international can you get? I mean, it's just right? one of the, You know what I'm saying? Fantastic. So you, you've got a lot of snow up there, mate, yeah? Yeah, and it's uh, it's snowing again now. And the weatherman, um, if I'm not on air Thursday, it's because I've committed murder. The weatherman came on. <laughs> and our, yeah, it's bad. It, today was a high of 11 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, I don't know, minus four liters and a half knee in your country. I don't know. But so he had the nerve to say, and, uh, and on Thursday, the, the brutal cold weather is coming in. I'm like, it's 11 friggin' degrees. What do you consider <laughs> brutal cold, pal? So, Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to kill him, and yeah. hopefully I'll be out of bail for my show Thursday. you got to be tough in New York. You know what I'm saying? Quite so, minus 15 Celsius, eh? Is that right? Uh, yeah. Oh, I, that is cold. I, yeah, I, I mean, you know, we do yeah. get minus 15 here. I was telling you earlier on, Kai. We get minus 15 here sometimes. It doesn't last. You know, it's not... Maybe last a couple of days and it warms up a little bit. You but, guys uh, yeah. are gonna want to. You guys gonna want to kick me in the balls, man. I tell you, we we have we we if we we see less than thirteen degrees here, man. People start panicking, man. That's what I'm telling you, it's, this is we're close to Africa. You know, I mean, you really. I I deserve berating by you right now. <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah, let's with you, berate man. that bastard, shall we? Let's yeah. berate him for a living. Bastard on the Portuguese. You and your damn month. weather. You and uh, your sunshine. Yeah, yeah, you, sunshine, yeah, English bastard. <laughs> you moved, you moved from quite a quite a warmer climate, though, didn't you, uh, uh, Robin? Because you were in um, some I other place. Denver. Denver. Well, I was in Denver, which is it was it was cold and snowy, but it's not like this. It's well, it doesn't have the humidity and it doesn't have lake effect snow because it's uh, it's considered mountain desert. It's five thousand uh, feet in the air, so. Yeah, this is I'm at I'm at ocean level just about here and uh just this side of the Great Lakes. So that's making a huge amount of difference. I got a got a message here from um from Bill who's in the chat room. He wants to know uh, how your pussy is. <laughs> at home well, I'm thinking look at home. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, I'm I'm saying nothing. Was in the bookcase earlier and now it's on the couch. <laughs> it's on the couch. I must explain to her to, to Kai, we you've got a little pussy cat. It's a big fluffy one, isn't it? Yeah, she is. What, oh, she, I beg your pardon. I'm calling her he. She probably, she's probably a bit confused right now, isn't she, if she's listening? She's thinking, yeah. what, 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 she's what, not. She's <laughs> what's he trying to say to me? What is he? Is he some, some kind of pervert? Yeah, so um, she's... Um, Are you being catty? Oh, what, 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 uh, what is she? <laughs> what, what sort of make is she? Of? Uh, you know what? I don't know. People that have seen her think that she's part show cat. Um, she's really tall for a cat, but, but pretty thin. She's just she's all white with black ears and a black tail. Does she have big teeth? Not really, no. Oh, it's not a snow leopard then. Okay. Well then <laughs> I think I would have noticed that. <laughs> <one is. laughs> so the next track we got is uh, one of yours, Kai. It's um a, a thing called uh, La Plage de David. What's this one all about? Oh, La Place de David. Oh, man. It's, well, well, I was stuck in France. I, I told you my story when I bust through Europe, man, uh, three months, you know, back in 1999. Uh, I had to get away from the bad influences of the music scene in England. Let's just keep it there. I, I won't investigate that segment anymore. And I need, I need to get away, and I hit the road. I sold my music kit for basically less than a song. It was worth thousands of euros, and I sold it for nothing. But just to get away, you know, a plane ticket for a bit of freedom, and uh, I got stuck in France, and I was on a beach, and the beach was called the Beach of David, and you know in French that, uh, um, that is the La Plage de David, mm. and I wrote this piece of music.
Yep. If you just tuned in, you're listening to The Dark Side with me, Kenny Dark Rain, here on Loop Radio and simultaneously on 440 South in uh, Staten Island, New Jersey. And I'm here with um, the lovely Miss Robin Graves and my featured special guest uh, this week, Mr. Kai O'Callaghan. That was hey. a lovely, lovely little track there. We were just talking about the weather in the, there in the break and... Um, and you're talking about how cold it is and stuff, and uh, I, I, like you, uh, Kai, I used to live uh, further south, in, 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 in the south of France. Uh, we lived there for about three years, and um, didn't, never had any frost, you know, didn't have any, uh, uh, let alone snow and stuff. And it was okay, I guess, but then when we moved down here, and as I was just saying earlier, we get, you know, 40 degrees sometimes in the summer, and then minus 15 in the winter. And I, I, I quite like the different seasons, you know, it's nice to... To see a bit of a uh, bit of snow sometimes, yeah. But, but the, the good thing is, I suppose, is we don't get it for very long. Uh, where, whereas in you know in New York, you've had it for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. You know, which is a drag. Right. I think that's the, the clincher there. What you just said there, Kenny. I, mean, I, I missed the four seasons because I originally lived in England. You know, and, and you'd see the autumn coming around my birthday in, in late September, and then the the, 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 the fall. You'd call it Colleen in in America. Obviously, uh, and then you see the winter, then the spring, and you got these four seasons. In Portugal, in in the Algarve, you have this: you have spring, summer, autumn, spring, spring. summer, autumn. So it just misses winter. And the the, the actually, I've got to tell you, one week ago, um, we had one day, right? I've got to tell you, one day when it was really, really cold for where we are in this in the world, where in the house you could see your breath. One day oh. in the whole winter. So we're lucky, man. We, we, we can't complain. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really. Absolutely. I need you to come house sit for me, Kai, and I'll come hang out with your family and sing along to <laughs> your music, okay? Hey, listen, it's nice, but I'm not going to go jumping into my swimming pool just yet. You know? It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. Still, Imagine it's, how much sympathy I have for you right now. It's none. None is happening. Probably you're, you're going to kick me in the balls when we meet in person, for sure. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome to. It's like everyone else does. It's okay. It's a, it's a done thing. <laughs> so there we are. Um, she's off to kick him with the balls, and uh, we're going to play another track, I think. <laughs> oh, but in the chat room, just so you know, um, Joe says that she has two pussies, and no, no, I can't beat that. Yeah, I just see that. Yeah, he said that. <laughs> wow. Oh, bless. If she wasn't my niece, I would really be enjoying that, but... Um... <laughs> It's a, bit, it's a little bit incestuous, isn't it, really? You know, <laughs> it's a little bit incestuous, Joe. Thanks for a bit too much information there for me, Joe. Thank you very much. I've got this image now in my head, right? I've got this image, okay, of two pussies. I don't want to know that anymore, okay? I do not want that in my head. Thank you. Oh, but Uncle Kenny. <laughs> oh, do what you want, but don't you flick me with these images, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Joe just told you to shut up, Kenny. Yeah, she would. Oh. Uh, I'm sure she would. That's uh, Joe. That's, that's a big hello to uh, for Joe Doyle, our artist liaison officer. She does all our Twitter and uh, looks after <laughs> all our artists for us. Thank you for that, uh, and thank you for saying shut up, which is great too. So, well, yeah, where were we? So, yeah, weather. Weather's good. Yeah, I love weather. <laughs> 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 See, you're going to I could be mistaken. I'm not going to say another f***ing word now. I'm 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 staying out of this now because I know I've already... uh, I've probably said a lot of the wrong things about the the weather in Portugal, so I'm going to shut up. (laughs) Well, I just want to to officially welcome you uh, on air to uh, to Loop Radio, and um, we're all very pleased that you're going to be joining us, and um, we're looking forward to your shows and um, maybe some live shows too. That'd be great. Yeah, it's gonna be great, man. I listen. I, I think I've um, I found a nice home with you guys. I've got to tell you, man. You've got, you, you've got you, you just. I mean, honestly, what I've seen. I've been obviously spying on the on the on the website. You know, the last week or two, um, listening on the shows and stuff, man. And I've been hearing some amazing tunes, man. Really, really great stuff. I especially liked the guy that follows me, Drew, man. Uh, on because obviously I do the monitor the shows at least of the first couple on any station and uh, I, I ended up listening to uh, Drew's um, uh, ah, sound, sound system visionary Vision. sound system yeah. so, thank you visionary sound system and yeah man, one and a half hours in 
before yeah. I could even draw myself a- a- away from from the mm. show. I mean, honestly, and I, he, uh, got things, yeah. but he, he but, you know, he's got this search and destroy thing going on, and he just goes out there and he finds this fantastic music. You know, he, he's he's into his dub and his ska and his reggae and stuff, and it's yeah. just awesome, said, awesome yeah. sounds. I might, I might say, I, mean, I haven't got much dub on, on my books at the moment, but I might send him at least that one dub that I had from Urban Alien, you know, there's one thing. Oh, I'll like tell, tell you another thing is, but it's, it's nice to, um, how can I say this without sounding like I'm, I'm kissing ass here, man, a little bit. Hey, listen, you nice kiss as much ass as you want, okay? We right, love, no, okay, we love ass kisses. Kiss <laughs> we kiss love people who like kiss my no, ass. It's really nice to meet people evolved like this, you know, the, the, uh, down the road a little bit, the, uh, 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 beyond their own personal egos that are actually put your music out because it's good. That That's a great thing to find. I, I, I must say that I am the only one on Loop Radio that does have a dressing room, okay, uh, on the 54th <laughs> on the fifty fourth floor of, of, uh, of Loop Towers. Of, of, of Loop Towers, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even allowed in the towers. I have to stay in the crypt. Yeah, she's in the crypt. <laughs> She, she crept into the crypt and she she crept and she crept out. Hey man, my office is in the, is, is in the outhouse, man. It's cool, you know. Every, everyone's taking the dump before I go in and do my show. Man. So what can I say? <laughs> but no, I mean, we, we we've been blessed by um, you know people like um, like Robin and Drew and uh, and all the other guys and girls that we've got with us that are, they're just um, they're just uh, genuine talents, you know, and they're they're. they're all of their shows are very unique, unique, and they just do a great job for us. And um, yeah, we're very blessed. And we're also blessed with some awesome, awesome, awesome uh, independent music. You know. Yeah. That's what makes Absolutely. it. That's, that's what fuels it. Let's face it. Eh? That's what fuels it. Oh, yeah, hey, Rob, uh, Robin, when's your yeah. show? When, what days are your show? Uh, I'm on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, <laughs> Shut up, and, twi- <laughs> and twice on Tuesday. <laughs> I'm I'm just starting a new show, hopefully next week for four forty South on um, Wednesday nights right after Kenny's show. Okay, and that what what's that time for us? I have no idea. I'm not good at time zones. And what's time oh, for yeah. you? What time for you in, in in New York? It's gonna be eight eight PM to ten PM my time on Wednesdays. Okay, got it. Uh Robin does a great um, a rock show on Mondays called the Rock Asylum. Uh, with our uh, Alex, Alex Salt, who does the Rock of Salt. Uh, so Mondays is right rocking. Alex, yeah. And then on um, uh, Thursdays, uh, Robin does a country show, which is um, which is great stuff. And then again on Sunday, I think you do a... Um, Saturdays, I do... Uh, Saturdays, well, Saturdays, Saturdays, I do... I pick a theme usually for Saturdays. Yeah. Last week it was uh, Cuddly Toys, which is nice. I, quite, I, quite oh. like that. I do quite like that one. The Cuddly Toys section. Oh. Yeah, so um, yeah, so Robin's um, yeah, Robin's a busy guy, and she's uh, as you as you can tell by her voice, is just a, a natural um, a natural talent, a natural ham, <laughs> a natural ham. And we're pleased to have her because you know she's great, great stuff. I'm grateful to be here, and that's that's the truth. Wow, ah, give us a kiss. <laughs> we can make that a three way, yeah. <laughs> ready? Go on, okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Uh, after you. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, a free way, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> Shagalicious, <laughs> baby. Shagalicious. Shagalicious so, virtual. <laughs> well, virtual Shagalicious there, man. <laughs> so the next time... The, the chat room says, what, what's going on in the chat room? Oh, they're going, yeah. They they're going, next. Again, bish, bash, bosh, all sorts of stuff going on. So the next track we've got up is uh, by a lady called Anne Harrington. Uh, what's this one? Oh yeah! For? Now this girl, man, she can sing, man. This this is an Irish lady uh, from Dublin. She has a band called the Rattle Shakes, not to Rattle be confused Shakes. with the Rattle Snakes. You know, www dot rattle snakes rattle shakes dot com. Uh, man, uh, they, she's a, a very good friend of Rui from Stratosphere, actually, as it turns out. But I met them independently. Uh, she's got a, a very well sorted out band, man. And she balances her, her family life as well, bless her, with three, four kids, you know. She's an amazing mum. And she's, uh, she's, uh, she's um, uh, often on George's show. I actually introduced uh, Anne to George, uh, which is the only time I've actually introduced anyone to George. George is normally introduced to people to me, George Hegelman. But uh, this is one, one time I can actually say this lady she deserves a spot in, in, the, in, in the limelight, man. This girl is amazing. Thank you. 
You are listening to Kenny Darkry. That's a lovely uh, Anna Harrington there and his track called Do You Think? Oh, what do you think? That was great. The great well, taste. You were going to tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, about, well, uh-huh. this is the thing is when we met, when, when we um, actually attracted Anne Harrington to be a part, an official member of the Blue Nose Baboon Collective, um, <laughs> we actually made her a video. I, I made my, her a video and my, my, my wife helped, helped her. God, she's invaluable to the process. Uh, Katia Gavayu is my wife, you know. And um, so we made the video and it took me ages to get it right. Not because, as I, I, I did say this off here, not because uh, uh, um, it was, she was insisting that I get it right, because the song was so amazing that I wanted to get it perfect. I wanted to get it all synchronised in and everything. And we managed to get it done for Anne. And then when I sent her the copy, she was just happy with whatever I sent her. She was amazing. So I sent her the best of the, of the, of the three that I'd made. 
And uh, that's it. And the rest is history, I guess. And then we'll become really good friends on Facebook. And on, we've, I've, she was on my show doing the Skype interview. We've done uh, dual Skypes for other shows as well in LA and, and whatnot, where we've, co- we've made a bit of a riot from having a laugh a little bit too much, if you like, a little bit. She speaks <laughs> fluent Gaelic, actually, fluent Gaelic. Uh-huh. And I speak a little bit of Gaelic, and uh, I speak also Portuguese and a few other languages. So we were like, having a crack and running, running. We were actually running the show, and the two DJs, two host DJs, were actually become guests within the own show, and that was a little bit of a scandal, I guess. But it was great. It went down well. We had a great laugh. Here, so. Fantastic. So, um, Colin, you've got a you're, you're, you've got a show coming up tomorrow. Your country show, I think, isn't it? Tomorrow. What's what's on right, tomorrow? Yeah. What, what's happening tomorrow? Tell me all about it. Just it's gonna be country music, Kenny. It's country music, and <laughs> it's gonna be on the radio. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love yeah. that stuff. <laughs> yeah, but you know Come what on. I do have? I can tell you. Um, you got on the show. Nothing, nothing special, but coming up soon. As soon as our friend James Angel gets his, uh, he's got a couple of country songs in the works. When he gets those done, he's agreed to come on the show. And oh, Lance wow. Stinson, whose music I absolutely adore, it's got. Most of it's uh, just you know regular down home country, but he's got some stuff with humor. Uh, one of his songs is called um, "Hold My Beer, Watch This," which is a, <laughs> you know if you're southern, it, you've heard it before people die. And uh, he's agreed to come on the show, so it's just a matter of organizing times with him. So um, tomorrow's a regular show, but coming up in the future, we're going to have some exciting guests. Wow, looking forward to that. Looking forward to that big time. Yeah, well. Um Thank you, uh, thank you for being my special guest uh, tonight, Kai. It's been great uh, talking to you. And, uh, oh, it's great to be here, man. Thank you. It's been a great opportunity to, for everyone to meet you and get to know you, uh, yeah. you know, all our listeners and stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a million, man. For, I'm, I'm really glad to be on board. And thank you for joining us, Robin, for your, um, some, you know, your, your input in the show, which was... What's, what's your show about? Well, maybe we got some country music on, you know, and that's about it, really. You know, got a few jingles, maybe. I don't know, you know. It's a, it's a country show. What do you want? You know, it's on. I put the records on. I play the records, okay? And I'm looking on. What do you want? So thank you I for that. <laughs> I aim to please. I aim to please. Thank you for your, thank you for your input there. <laughs> It's radio, Kenny. What do you it's want? It's radio. It's like radio. What do you want? We play records. What do you want? You know, we just stick them on. Okay, I play the song. Like, I'm only here for the chat room. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, Robin. Really great to meet you, darling. So nice mm-hmm. to meet you. Looking forward to those shows, Kai. Yeah, I, honestly, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be great to, uh, to to do something in the future together. It'd be so cool, eh? Absolutely. Honestly, man. I've had a a ball tonight, man. Really funny time. Really cool. It's been great. And thanks to everybody that's uh, joined us in the chat room. And thank you to everyone that's listened to us in cyberspace. Um, We do appreciate your support and we love your support. I'm going to leave you with a track uh, from Kyle Callahan. This is, I think, probably the first one I heard of yours called The Ghost of Me. What's what's this? Do you want to give us a little little bit of a twitch on this one? Yes, actually. uh, (laughs) I wrote and recorded this in one day because I wanted the title track for an album I was making. That's it. And uh, since then, then I made the video in about two days after that. Since then, it's took off. And if you ask me to play the thing again, I'll have to relearn it. And that's the truth. (laughs) You're about as good as Robin Graves talking about his show. (laughs) That's the truth. It's probably the best (laughs) track I've ever made in my life. I did it all in one day. I made the video in about two days. And then after that, three years passed. And and, and to play it again, man, it's just so complicated so many uh, uh twists and turns in it and and so many key changes man i, I could learn it again but I, it would be hard for me to learn my own tune you get my drift wow that's, that's a bummer man <laughs> it's a trip got your drift <laughs> got your drift well thanks uh, as i say thanks again for coming on and uh making a great show tonight and thank you uh, robin too it's been great having you on been my pleasure. thanks Thanks. <laughs> robin graves <laughs> <laughs> the woman with very few words <laughs> Can I get one more plug in before I go? Please do. Please pl- plug away. Okay, man. Just check out our website, www.bloom.com. Anyway, yeah, blah, 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 blah. sorry. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I interrupted you then. What was it? Bloom.com. Bloom.com. 
BlueNoseBaboon.com. You heard it here first on Luke Radio. Hey, baby, that's the one. <laughs> so it's been great talking to you, as I say, and thanks for coming on. Uh, this is a track from uh, Kyle Callahan called The Ghost of Me. Uh, until I see you again, which will probably be uh, who knows when Friday. Look after each other, love each other, and may your God go with you. Dark Rain.